Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another knife video for you. Today we're going to do a double Spyderco disassembly. We have the Spyderco Capara and the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 Crew Wear. This is the Polish G10 uh, knife, knife Center exclusive. It's no longer available, sadly, and I have heard they're not coming back. But uh, two of my favorite Spydercos, definitely my favorite PM2 configuration I've ever had. I love the, 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 the smooth G10, I guess they don't call it Polish G10, the smooth G10. And the Kapara is just freaking awesome. Um, why am I doing these two? Well, I did do another one. <laughs> and uh, I shot it in slow-mo like an idiot. So uh, I, I, that, that's gone now. Uh, with uh, the North Arm Skaha and the um, uh, Southern Grind Spider Monkey. Because they're coming up in a battle to the death. And that would have been more relevant. But, yeah. Videos uh, lost time. If I can figure out a way to speed it up, then someday I'll, I'll try and put that up. But that's not going to be a priority of mine gonna do these two because i don't think i've ever taken either of them apart i just was looking through some of my other knives i don't think i've taken either of them apart so let's get to i did loan the uh, kapara out to someone else another youtuber we're gonna start with that one maybe it's been taken apart but uh i don't think so and also since this is crew wear we'll get to that in a minute i'm gonna do the uh aegis edci stuff that i always uh aegis that i always rave about um so you'll see how to apply that also so this will be useful knowledge and you get to see some of the stuff that i use uh, i will say the torx bits that i'm going to be using are not what i usually use all the time these are this is the little triple set that i give away at the on the live shows it is great they do work really well um, but normally i do use uh, an ifixit driver or another you know driver with uh, the more expensive weha bits my t6 is worn out at the moment for both of those i have some on order but i haven't got them yet and um these work great too and they work better under the camera because they're smaller so and these usually uh at least the most of the comp compression locks both these are compression locks aren't terribly difficult to take apart if one's going to be a problem it's going to be the pm2 i'm not expecting any problems with this it's definitely not a t6 it's a spider coast i'm sure it's a t10 yep a little resistance there Yeah, we do have a little bit of Loctite on there. Nothing too extreme. Still not sure if the other guy took it apart or not. Of course it's not a T10, you idiot. Why are you doing that? But you'll see all the stuff that I use as it goes on. I'm not going to outline every single one. I actually thought I lost this knife for about a week. I loaned it to somebody. Like I said, I got it back. And no, that's, that's untouched Loctite. This mat, by the way, I got it on Amazon. I don't know the brand or anything. I watched like a Nick Shabazz video where he outlined what he uses, and I couldn't find the one that he had, and I got one that was just close to it. Yeah, that, that screw has definitely never been out before. Yeah. We'll clean those up here in a moment. Let's get everything all apart first. Hopefully we can do, do, do this all from one side. We will see. It is not wanting to come apart now. Hmm. Oh, there's some movement. There we go. Just took a second. Pop that scale off. Yeah, it's not too dirty for how much I how much I carry this thing. That is not wanting to come off of there though. And now it's all popping back down on there. As much as I hate to do this, I don't like doing pry stuff, but I just use the biggest screwdriver I have and wrap it up. Sometimes you gotta give them a little pop. Man, that is not wanting to come off. That is quite surprising. There it goes. Come on, you bastard. I know you wanna. Man, that is on there. Come on, there we go. Now the other side's back on. The joys of knife disassembly. Just remember, you guys asked for more of these videos. So if you get bored, I take no responsibility. 
Oh man, one side comes off and the other side doesn't want to. There we go. We're free! Okay, now take this back off of here. They always have shockingly small washers on these uh, compression locks, but they work. So what I'm going to do to try and fix that, I'm kind of trying to remember now, and I'm going to forget. So this was on the top side, this was on the bottom side. Sometimes it's as easy as you just switch them. So instead of this being on the top side, I'll just switch them to the other sides. And sometimes that that does it, or sometimes it makes it horribly worse. So I have to remember now, this is top side, this is bottom side. Put these screws on here, and then just use our you know, rubbing alcohol. And just, and this is just like a piece of a t-shirt. I have been to way too many bike races in my life and other trade show event things, and I have so many free t-shirts. So now it's all nice and clean. Put this, I have a special little spot over here. I don't know if it's on the camera. Yeah, you can see it just barely. That is the top side one now. And this is going to be the bottom side one. Just a little trick. I found sometimes on Spyderco's, or not even Spyderco's, anything. Sometimes if you just switch washers around, tolerances and stuff, you know, it makes it better. Not always. Sometimes it makes it worse, but sometimes it does. Just make it better. Clean that Loctite off because we're going to replace it. There's the screw I dropped down there below. That's why these rubber mats are awesome. I highly recommend these. It doesn't have to, you know, a lot of companies give them away now and stuff. It's pretty popular. You know, USA Made Blade is giving them away right now with purchase. Or maybe it's a blade show thing. I don't know. But um, anything that is is shock absorbent, so when you drop a screw, it doesn't go bouncing across the room. It's always really nice. Oh, there's a good chunk of something in there. This is actually pretty clean inside. I do carry this quite a bit, or did, until I loaned it to somebody, and then I lost it for a week, but let's clean off all the surfaces. I'm not super anal about cleaning off the whole inside of the knife. Like, I'm not going to bother taking the spacer off. I could just pick it up off, but I'm just not super crazy about that. I have this one off, so I will. But I take pretty good care, care of stuff, so I'm not usually too crazy about cleaning every little tiny thing out, because it usually doesn't need it. All right, now, put it back together. First step, some lubrication. I'm going to use KPL on this. I do use KPL a whole lot. I'm not a complete KPL evangelist. I do still have a nano lube, and I do still use the nano lube sometimes. Um, I usually use the KPL in place of where I'd use the nano 10. Um, I'm going to knock, I'm not going to knock this all the way out, but, well, I guess I am. It came out. <laughs> Said I wasn't going to, and then I did. I guess I will clean this a little bit more. Since it's out, why not? Like I said, action-wise, this thing was drop shutty and great, so it is a D-shaped pivot, so make sure we line that back up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, come on, you little bastard. See, that's why I don't do these, because I say swears. There we go. All right. Now this is the bottom one now. And then I always find on washers, now sometimes if I feel that they're a little rough, I do use this strap block. This is the uh, Knives Plus one. They're great. Use that all the time. But um, sometimes I, I will like polish them up a little bit on that. But these are actually really good, so I'm not going to bother doing that. But just a couple little tiny drops there, there, there. And then, dun, dun. yeah, that's plenty. I'm so not even going to put any more. I'm just going to kind of move some of this up onto the actual. And then, uh, yeah, let's just put this sucker back on. So there's no really like detent ball or track to lube on these things. So it kind of is what they is. All right. Work that in there a little bit. Now the other one, and again, same thing. I try and find usually on these. There's a there's a more rounded side. This one's actually fairly even. That one's a bit more rounded off. So I always put the smoothest side against the blade, just uh, 
I don't know. It seems to work well for me. I don't know if it's just a placebo thing or whatever. I put too much below, so I'm not going to put as much on top. And now, let's uh, put her back together. Pretty easy, other than that little bit of prying and stuff. That is not necessarily to be unexpected. I have to do that a fair amount. I don't like to unless I have to, but sometimes you do. Open my, I gotta put the scale back on first, right, moron? This is just a chance for me to come out and insult myself to you guys for probably 20 minutes. A little bit of lock. I use the stick Loctite. It's so much, so much easier. That's probably a bit much. I don't really need quite that much on there. Grab the T10 again. And we're just going to get this uh, guesstimate tight. And then we'll put the other two on. I admit, I'm usually not very good about remembering to put Loctite on these um, backspacer screws, but I'm going to today because I'm on camera. Another reason why I thought about messing with the part and I finally got off my butt and went to go find it was because uh, if you want to go watch on uh, Zach's stuff, he just did the morning of the day I'm recording this. I don't know when I'm going to put this up. He did a little video um, putting the bright red backspacer in. The designer of this knife, Alistair Phillips, um, he said the prototype had a bright red backspacer instead of this kind of burgundy one. And so he wants people to have the option to have that. So he started selling them, which is kind of cool. I'm not going to. I kind of like the burgundy. It's a little more subtle. I thought about it, but I'm not going to. Um... He also added a sharpening trail to his personal one, because I guess he says that's more accurate to what the uh, what the prototype was. But you know, when stuff gets produced, things happen. All right. See how we are, how we guessed. As far as the action, yeah, it's way more off center. So hopefully, I don't need to do this all over again. That would be highly annoying. No, no, that's very loose screw. All right, we're centered, so let's see what it's like now. Flips out good. Doesn't drop shot quite like it used to. Well, let's give it a few more flicks and see. There we go. And centering's the same. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, no, it's about the same. That didn't do anything. It was worth a shot, though, right? And it sounded like it might work. Let's put it center and see what it's like. I Before, when it was centered, it wouldn't drop. Yeah, I'll take being slightly off center and being able to drop it then. And the rest. It's weird, it wasn't off center when I first got it. It dropped and was not off center. But as time has gone on, yeah, we'll get a little bit in the middle there. Yeah, it's right back to what it was. But that's fine. I'm used to it. It's all right. I wish it was perfectly centered, but it's okay. Um, let's go on to the PM2, which I'm a bit more worried about. Uh, I guess I have this is a much newer PM2. Hopefully, it's not loctited to death, um, or this video will never see the light of day. Because um, I have not heated anything up, I don't have anything prepared to do so. Uh, the last PM2 I tried to take apart was very loctited to to smithereens. So, okay, good sign. Pivot is not. I wouldn't expect the pivot to be because I'm sure that I've adjusted the pivot on this before. I do that almost everything. Get our T8s back here. Yep, that's coming right off. Definitely not been apart before though. A little bit of nunga nunga there, but um, nunga nunga I call that because that is the noise you make. You're turning really hard on something. that to fall out. There we go. Ooh, knocking stuff around. Watch, caught it. And one thing we are not going to do is deal with this lanyard hole. I'm not doing it. <laughs> that is a pain in the ass to get that thing apart. Ooh, this is filthy inside. By my standards, anyway. Top one... And this was centered up perfectly fine, so we're not going to do anything with that. Now this, to get this off, you have to... What is that? 
Yeah, I'm glad I took this thing apart. That is... That's just a lot of pocket crap. I do use this knife a fair amount, though, so that is unsurprising, I guess. It's earned it. And are we going to bother taking that other washer off, or are we just going to lube it? You know what? This video has already gone on for 15 minutes. Um, we're not going to take that other washer off. We're just going to we're just going to clean it and lube it. I can get to it. This is still quite wet. So, if you wanted to, all you got to do is uh, just unscrew this other screw, and that pops off, and you can pop the other washer off. But we're not switching washers around or anything. It's going to be fine. It'll be fine. And give this blade a really good clean. Give you just a little bit more of this. Because, also, while I have it apart, I'm going to EDCI it because crew wear is not completely uh, stainless. And the EDCI is very good at protecting it. This already has EDCI on it, but I don't remember how long ago I put it on. And I know it's gotten a fair amount of use since then. So let's just be sure. And it's easier to do it when the blade's off, so... And all you got to do, it's pretty pretty easy, says right on the bottle. Spray on, rub in, wipe off. So that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to grab a little microfiber cloth here. I use a hunter orange one so that my desk does not get shot during hunting season. Safety first. If you think that is mocking people who wear hunter orange out uh, in public when it's not hunting season, it was. All right, and you just kind of gently rub it in. You see there's a fair amount on there. And then you just kind of gently wipe off the excess. I don't try and bear down very much because I want to make sure I'm leaving a good coating of the stuff on there. You can see I'm trying to cover the the uh, tracks, you know, of all the bearings and stuff. But you know, you don't. It, it's not that big a deal, really. Um, I've never had it affect. I missed some spots back here. I just wanted, this is where you get all the corrosion is back on this side, not really usually on the blade. Um, I just want to make sure you get that rubbed in there pretty good. And it just kind of bonds with the metal. It works really well. And it gives it a little bit of a shine, as you can see. It makes it a little shinier. It's pretty nice. So I really like the EDCI. I stand by it. It works great. Other people I know, Cedric and Ada has done a really good test of all of it, and, you know, of it, but you know, with a real hardcore corrosion test, and it held, held up extremely well. All right, more go with the KPL on this one too. Keep hitting that camera with my the bill of my hat. Sorry about that. I made a rhyme. And we're gonna put just and again. I'm just gonna try and move some of the excess I put on there. Go. Now get this other washer back out again. If my fingernails will cooperate. There we go. Again, smooth side down. Just a smidge there. All right, and then again, we didn't. I didn't deal with that because it's a pain. I have ruined them before. I may actually I forgot to check to see how clean that other side. Yeah, I did clean off the other side. I want to make sure that I had. Yeah, it's a pain when you swap scales on these. Sometimes those lanyard tubes are just stuck, and I've ruined a lot of lanyard tubes doing that. Oh, there's a little chunk of something I missed. Oh, that's a piece of the... That's bright orange, so it must be off of that rag that I just used. It is a brand new one, so it is not unlikely. I didn't clean these screws off. 20 minutes. I should give someone a secret prize if they made it to the end, or if they just skipped to the end. Oh, bollocks, I didn't put a... There we go. We may get through this with only PG-13 levels of swearing. That is... That would be amazing. That would be absolutely amazing. On the best of days, I curse like a parrot. So, the fact that I can make it through any YouTube videos without swearing is pretty gosh 
golly gee darn it amazing. I just like saying stupid words instead of swearing now. Hoobastank is one of my favorite false explicatives. Hoobastank! I know it's a crappy band from the, what, the 90s, 2000s? I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I could ever identify one of their songs, but I do like saying it. It gives me joy, makes me giggle, and annoys my family, which makes me laugh even more. As you can see, compression locks are not too terribly difficult. It's just a liner lock, other way around. It's not difficult like, you know, uh, axis lock is or something. How's our centering? Yeah, pretty damn good. I think I guessed just about right on that. I did. Yep, I guessed perfectly on that. Look at that. Look at that. Tiny victories. So there we go. That is a double compression lock disassembly. Um, yeah, pretty easy. They're not difficult at all. Don't be afraid to take them apart. Just know on the PM2, if you want to do a scale swap or something, uh, that, um, that lanyard tube is often quite a problem. I've never managed to take one apart without scratching up the lanyard tube, having to use vice grips or something like that. But there we go. We are all done. We have a PM2 crew wear that's all lubed up and has a new fresh coating of EDCI on it. And we have a Capara that has slightly better centering, but uh, it still isn't, isn't quite perfect. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.